The modern entertainment industry has perplexed millions of us around the globe with its crazy stories, people and lifestyles within the world of narcotics. However, for many within the drug industry, it is simply just business and another revenue stream to add to their portfolio. That was very much the case for John Jacob Astor, who made his money in a variety of ways, one of which was the drug trade. To try and put into context just how rich this man was, I'll compare his wealth to some figures around today. Elon Musk is said to come in at around 0.71% of the US GDP. John Jacob Astor was around the 0.9% mark, putting him comfortably as the United States' richest man for the time. Astor became wealthy through the fur trade after making great use of the Jay Treaty signed in 1794, which saw a deal for 10 years of peaceful trade between the US and Great Britain. By the start of the 18th century, John had a net worth of a quarter of a million, around six million in today's money. In 1812, the Brits decided to do what they do best, take something that doesn't belong to them and claim it as their own. In this instance, it was John's trading post that had been captured by British troops during the War of 1812. I guess this whole fiasco made John decide he'd had enough of just fur for the time being, and he made the natural switch into the opium trade. His company brought tens of tons of opium from the Ottoman Empire and shipped the product to Canton, a large city within China. Opium was, even back then, illegal within China, meaning that John had to get his drugs into China in a discreet way. To do this, he made his larger ships meet with smaller vessels outside the ports before transferring the contents over. It's unclear precisely how much money John made through his opium trade within China, but it would have been in the millions in today's money. After trading in China, John decided he would bring opium over to his home country of the United States. Like all good drug dealers, John decided he would advertise his goods within the New York newspapers, although it was said he was far less successful in the US than his previous stint selling in China. Astor was certainly not alone in using the drug trade to make money. Many multimillionaires back then got involved without ever seeing the damage of selling such a product. It was said at one point, 10% of the Chinese population used opium, and of course many became addicted. Although, unlike others, Astor did not make his entire fortune from the drug trade, the fact he saw it as such a good money-making opportunity proves the narco wars we are still living with today were destined to happen. Today, drug traffickers and organisations are still making billions of dollars a year selling their product, and there's no sign of it slowing down.